was uh, speaking to Brother Shabir yesterday. A lot of people in the comments were saying that this the question that I asked was uh, like more something I should ask you. Um, and the question is basically when they talk about abiogenesis, right? Or I guess the emergence of life, yeah. then like when they have when they have data, they you know they draw conclusions, interpret the data, and etc. But I guess the question is why they always tend to say, okay, well, abiogenesis, it doesn't matter when we talk about evolution, but Shabir says you have to start, you, you have to go to the start point and figure out how it even began to know how it continues. So mm. if you go, you know, if you consider, so basically he's saying, I don't know if you're aware of this website, but there's like this origins website and there's like this uh, PhD, his name is, what was his name? I think uh, something like Douglas Theobald or something like that. And he posted, uh, he like published this one article, like 29 evidences from a macroevolution. And then Shabir was saying that, you know, the evidence is like being interpreted in a way, you know, that isn't like necessarily the way it should be interpreted. Mm. So the thing is, again, it goes back to methodological naturalism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a biogenesis is something, who, uh, something which if somebody really wants to know just how can we just Flim define it? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So, you see, Darwinian evolution speaks about the development of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. But before development, you've got to have origin. Yeah, so from the moving from chemistry to biology. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, <laughs> the problem is, like you said, Brother Eden, you can't, you've got to have both as a package. Mm. Yeah, Because if you're going to say there's one origin, mm. and that one origin is linked to the unlikelihood of chemical evolution. But if chemical evolution is much more likelier, mm. then you'll have multiple evolutions, I'm sorry, multiple origins. If you have multiple origins, that totally is like a bull in a china shop of right. the people who come up with the genealogical tree. Because right. it'll be like, that's exactly what Paul Nelson was saying. Wow. He was saying, wow. if you have more than one origin, wow. which by the way, Ford Doolittle and Carl Bowles and others who are atheists, by the way, believe in they, they believe that the tree of life is redundant. Really, uh, and uh, when it comes to uh, tree of life, single, everything goes back to the same. Yeah, so. yeah, Luca, yeah. Uh, last universal common ancestor. They, they yeah. don't believe in that. Yeah. And um, the three domains of life, one of them was discovered by uh, Carl Walls. I mean, these are big, big people. Mm -hmm. Long story mm -hmm. short, the, their whole idea of chemical evolution and going from the inorganic to the organic. If you look at all of the models, there's a guy called James Tor. Uh, he absolutely demolishes these ideas, right? However, you have to understand they still believe in them and they have to believe in them simply because of methodological naturalism. Now, Darwin himself, and I, I want everyone to recognize this here, Darwin himself, he believed that the origin should have been something very, very simple. The cell would be something very, like, like a jelly, very simple, right? It turned out to be much more complex. Then, in fact, it was a. That's why uh, Michael B. He gave the example of the black box. Mm -hmm. You open it up, and it's like a mega city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So later, other Darwinists like Francis Crick, they started coming up Some with guy that made the DNA. Yeah, the, the, yeah, exactly. He discovered yeah. the structure of DNA, and he, and he won uh, won the Nobel Prize yeah. for that. So he he tried to solve that mm -hmm. by saying, well, maybe panspermia can explain it. Panspermia being that life was sent down to Earth mm. uh, with, with from rocket with, with <laughs> rockets and from an advanced civilization. Where did the advanced civilization come from? Mm. Uh, Richard Dawkins was asked this because he also flirted with the idea of panspermia, mm. Mm. and he said maybe maybe they evolved. Mm. So the thing is, look, you can't win if methodological naturalism. What we can do is point out yeah. they have methodological naturalism, right? And it's, it's kind of like this. So you, it's brother, a circularity, isn't it? You can't prove it with it. Yeah, it's a circularity if they say it's not an assumption. If this is an assumption, we can leave them alone. Yeah. So for example, if I have a, a debate with you, brother Eden, mm -hmm. and we have the debate based upon you have to show me where in the Bible Jesus says he's not God. <laughs> well, you're not allowed to say the Bible's not reliable. You're yeah. not allowed to use the Quran. You're not allowed to use logic. You're going to lose that debate. Because no matter what you say, I'll always go back to something else. So we've yeah. limited all the options. So when you accept methodological naturalism, then you are always going to have Darwinism winning, regardless mm -hmm. of how many just so stories or this mm -hmm. or that. Mm -hmm. That's why mm -hmm. you can never tackle Darwinism using science alone. 
Yeah. You can never do that. You always have to go back to the philosophy of science. Um, Dr. Uh, Nielsen, right? Or Nelson, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Nelson, but yeah. does he have, what's his position on this? I'm guessing he doesn't necessarily believe in Darwinism, right? Uh, he He's an uh, intelligent design proponent, so he challenges Darwinism. Darwinism yeah. But he's an atheist or? Uh, Paul Nelson is a Christian. Oh, he's a Christian. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. And also, I want you to say, by the way, uh, <laughs> I, I know Hijab loves uh, to use fallacies against atheists, so he's going to love the uh, lo love this particular analogy. Yeah. So these guys, uh, whenever they come out like uh, uh, to challenge people like Nelson and others, uh, atheists, they come and say, "We can't take these people seriously." They believe in God. They're Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But the thing is, that's actually the, uh, what, what did I call it again? Uh, the true Scotsman fallacy. Yeah. So, for example, the true Scotsman fallacy is the fallacy that true Scotsmen eat oats. Uh, sorry, the true Scotsmen don't put sugar in their oats. And then someone says, yeah, but Tom, he's a true Scotsman and he puts sugar in his oats. No, 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 no. But he, he's not a real Scotsman. <laughs> like, they'll just keep changing yeah. uh, what the... Uh, yeah, we're looking for people that are atheists. Uh, like I mentioned, David Belinsky is an atheist. No, no, there is, there is. Yeah. But, but here's the problem. If, if they are going to... If the atheists are going to discount yeah. theists yeah. because they're it's theists... It's almost like the genetic fans. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then we mm. can turn around to the atheists and say, we're not going to take you seriously because you're atheists anyway. Mm -hmm. What's good for the goose is good for the ganter. So what what's the point? <laughs> what's the point of actually using this? <laughs> what's the point of having this uh, thing about um, oh these people believe in God or they're Christians or they're intelligent land we can't take yeah. them seriously. Um, we'll break in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's someone break. <laughs> but if someone does break in, it's going to be a live stream and then. Hijab with the stick. Sure Most fun thing ever. Thing.